What is going on everybody, RC Styles here, welcoming you to tonight's Insomniac. Now if you have not seen Insomniac before, this is the episode where I just do not follow any of the rules or any of the status quo. I play really kick-ass games because I can't sleep. And tonight we are going to have a game that was going to also be featured on tomorrow's Time Warp. That is Randall's Monday featuring Jay and Silent Bob. Want to take a Oh, cinematics. A, dimension. a dimension not only inhabited by freaks and geeks, but also a dwarf named Carlos. A journey to the gumdrop house on the has a little bit of everything for every one of us. Some nice surprises, tragic losses, new allies, betrayals. We all wish we could go back and change some of the mistakes we've made. Now the person playing and voicing Randall is Jeff Anderson from Clerks movies as well as Jay and Silent Bob is a sociopath respectively maniac good for nothing. Dude, honestly, he never comes out of his room. I haven't seen him for like six months. I don't even remember what his face looks like. Ha! Huh. He doesn't even come out to go to the bathroom? No, I'd imagine that's what all the buckets are for. Ah, I bet he's dead. Nah, he uses growls to communicate. Growls? Randall, you're not talking about our wedding present, are you? Relax, honey, we're talking about his roommate. Yeah, plus it looks like my present won't be able to growl anyway. Science is still pretty far from being able to create a rapping pig. I'll have to think of something else, man. Don't worry, dude, it's the thought that counts. Guys, I don't want any scenes at my wedding. Is that asking too much? Scenes? What do you mean by scenes? You know exactly what I mean. We've been friends for a long time now, and I know what your idea of an unforgettable experience is. Oh, sorry, looks like I have some stuff to do. Like what? When I gave that carload of nuns directions to a lesbian bar? <laughs> that was quite unforgettable. It was, and I'd be lying if I said it wasn't funny, but I'm telling you, I don't want any kind of weird stuff at my wedding. It's gonna be the most important day of my life, and I don't want you guys to ruin it. Well, it's your call, but everybody knows Matt can be really romantic. Thank you, uh, Tiffany XO XO for then? the follow. Oh, come on, Sally. I tell you I love you almost every day. I'm super romantic. Yeah, sure. Do you mean when you belch it or when you say it in binary code? No, he means when he belches it in binary code. Matt always gives it his all. You can tell by the way he almost gags when he's doing it. Oh, by the way. Where are you going on your honeymoon? Well, I think Italy would be really romantic. The Big Ben, the Eiffel Tower, the Pantheon. I just love to go there. Oh, Sally, I told you all that stuff is in Germany. Libya is still my top choice. I'm dying to see the pyramids. So, are you guys going to live in Matt's place? Yep. Well, that was the plan, but I'm already looking for a new place. What? You want to move out? Come on, my mother just got us the Stovomatic 9000. I don't get it. it What are we drinking again? Uh, some kind of beer, I think. Yeah, something like that. I miss the grog era. Those were the days. Phew, that. I'm going to the restroom. Can you get us two more beers when you're done, honey? More beers? 
That way it will look even harder. Just promise me you won't be this time. Hey, come on. You can't promise that. Sally, if we're getting married, you have to trust me. Besides, I don't like puking anymore. I feel scammed because, you know, I pay for the stuff that comes out of me. Okay, it's just that, you know, I thought we'd be doing something more romantic to celebrate our engagement. You know what would be really romantic? Let me guess. Another round? Sally, how could you know me so well? Dude, check this out. It's the engagement ring I got for Sally. What do you think? Sure looks expensive. Well, it's your money. That's just the best part. It cost me a Dorito. That is impossible, Matt. You stole it, you can tell me. Sometimes I take stuff that's not mine, too. I know, everybody knows. But I didn't steal it, dude. I got it from a bum that lives around my neighborhood. Then I think he likes you. It was really weird. The guy was all out of his mind. He was going on and on about how this ring ruined his life, that it was cursed, that it would destroy the world. <laughs> Maybe that was a metaphor. Dude, you just gave him some Doritos and he gave you a ring? Yeah, I think he likes you. Come on, Randall. The point is that I took it to a guy who told me that it's 780.563 karat gold. And somehow it's sapphire, ruby, diamond, and emerald plated. It also cuts glass, starts cars. Really? May I hold it? Dude, you're my best friend. That's why you're here. But I'll never let this ring near those kleptomaniac paws of yours. You'll never forgive me for the robo-calculator incident, right? We were just kids. No, I don't want anyone touching this ring. Whatever. I'm sure she'll love it. Looks nice. Nice? Nice? This ring is better than nice. It's the most fantastic, wondrous ring in the world. The more I look at it, the more I want to keep it for myself. What are you going to keep for yourself? The, uh, uh, puke, sweetie. No throwing up today. Oh, well, here we go, guys. Last round. Five rounds later. Garbage everywhere, as far as the eye can see. And it's not a problem that it is literally starting to stink. I'm afraid something will attack me if I go near his door. I really think he's dead. No, dude, I told you. He uses growls to communicate. Guys, we're supposed to be celebrating our engagement. Why are we talking about Randall's roommate again? Shh, don't worry about it, honey. That freak is dead. <laughs> you remind me of a couple of alcoholic hamsters I had when we were in school. They had a very long life. Remember, Matt? I just hope we don't end up like those poor rodents. Dude, don't make me feel bad about that. <laughs> I don't even know how they got in the oven. I guess they were dazed and confused from all the stress and the alcohol. May Maybe. they rest in peace. <laughs> Where are you getting married? I really love St. Gilbert's Catholic Church, but Matt heard there's a three-headed monkey buried in the catacombs. Now it gives me the creeps. Really? I can't think about anything else. I... I think I drank enough for today. What? Honey, you should stop, too. Me? Why? Matt. I don't like it when each of your eyes is looking off in a different direction at the same time. Really? I love that. <laughs> Seriously, Matt. That's enough for today. I'm okay. He's okay. Can you go check on him? I don't want him ruining another pair of my shoes.
I told you, you can't keep him from puking. It's like, I don't know, mutant power or something. I just hope he slows down on the alcohol after the wedding. Oh, I'm sure after a month or two of marriage bliss, he'll move on to something stronger. I don't know, heroin, meth. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Matt. Hey, Matt! Should I grab Father Roy to perform <coughs> an exorcism? You seem to have a little projectile vomiting going on. <laughs> Well, at least you don't throw up lying on your back anymore. Well, I'm a grown-up now. I can't remember what we used to call that one. Can you believe it? Wait, I think I got it. One, two, three, splash? You're not even close. Ah, dude, damn it! What was it? Vesuvius, Matt! Vesuvius, Matt, stops people in their tracks. That's it! <laughs> Look, Matt, I love to spend my entire paycheck on booze just like the next guy. But you might want to show a little self-control, huh? I know, dude. Life's taught me a valuable lesson today. Really? What's that? You should always check for homeless people behind the dumpster before you start puking. Dude, you know what I think about you drinking that much. I know, dude, that a party's not a party till Matt Griffin starts puking it up. Exactly. But I'm kind of worried about you, you know? You don't even chew your food anymore. I think I just saw a whole nugget. You know, I saw this documentary about pigeons the other day and the way they're ahead of us. They just gulp everything down and let their stomachs do the rest. Well, they also hang out on telephone wires and shit on people's heads. You gonna do that too? <laughs> um, how pissed is Sally? Come on, she just cares about you. Me, on the other hand, all I do is watch you laugh in the face of death every day. And believe me, death is the one who really must be pissed at you. Okay, I think I'm done here. Wanna hug it out? Matt, I don't wanna hug you when you're not covered in vomit. Why would I wanna hug you when you are? Yeah. I know how you roll. One, no hugs. Two, no sharing. Three, no talking to strangers. And you forgot the most important one. No altering the space-time continuum. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. The Vesuvius Matt is up and about again. Follow me, Randall, and don't lose me, cause this night's gonna be legendary. Oh boy. Um, Matt, you drop. <laughs> Did you hear that, Randall? I think it's arrived. Hurry up! Hey, honey, I'm feeling much better now. Excellent. Now you can explain to me what the hell this woman is doing here with that animal at my wedding shower. Yeah, um... Now listen, sweetie, um... Matt, please, not now. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to announce that the donkey has arrived. Let the magic commence. Oh, this is going to be a wild ride. Alcohol, 
puking, bloody. There was some praying, too. <laughs> well, I better get moving. I think I'm supposed to be working today. Mortimer, I'm off to work. Oh, man. Is that my hangover? Or is death knocking at my door again? Whoever you are, I just want you to know I have my father's gun and a scorching Randall piece of Randall Hicks! Cut the shit and open the door! Mr. Marconi? Well, it sure made publishers clearing house. Open this door! Oh, whew. I'm so glad it's you. But please, don't ever do that again. God damn it, Hicks. Do what? Scare me like that. I nearly turned my Fruit of the Looms into a fudge factory. Damn, Cannelloni. Did you just call me Cannelloni? Oh, come on, listen. I've had a terrible night. I swear somebody was whispering in my ear over and over that I'm cursed. And I'm fairly certain I pissed in my closet again. Oh, do you know what day it is? you gonna try and get that ferret out of the plumbing? Cause I don't know if I can stomach staring at your hairy ass crack all day. Very funny. Your rent takes. As usual, you're late. I don't see my money. Neither do I, Mr. Marconi. But come on, it's only a couple of days late. No big deal. You owe me three months. Oh. Well, there must have been some kind of problem with the paperwork. Damn bureaucracy. Let me talk to my financial advisor. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Ah, Higgs, you need a financial advisor like I need ballerina shoes. That's lame. Well, what about the time I tried to pay you in gold coins? Those were bottle caps painted gold. Took me three weeks to get the paint off my hands. Mr. Marconi, I've been meaning to talk to you, but I don't think you're gonna like what I'm about to say. I'm sure I will. I have the feeling we're growing apart. What are you talking about? I've met someone else. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still love you and all, but... I just don't think this is gonna work out. What the hell? Please, don't say anything. It's better to end now before desire takes over. Just hold me for one last time. God damn it, just give me my damn money. I'm sick of you. Mr. Marconi, I have a problem. You were born with a problem. No, I wasn't. The thing is, my job's been getting me down lately. I'm being exploited, you know? There are always hundreds of orders that have to be delivered on their due date and in perfect condition. And do you know what the worst part is? I don't care. The customers. They're only worried about themselves. They never thank me or say, have a nice day. They treat me like dirt, you know? Like I have no feelings. They always say things like, the package is smashed, the package shouldn't drip, this is not the address you're looking for. Is it too much to ask that they just sign for their damn delivery and keep their smashed packages? Randall. Yes, Mr. Marconi? You work for the town's worst courier service, and you spend more time trying to think of ways to get out of work than you do actually working. Whoa, 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 Mr. Marconi, that's not entirely true. It is entirely true. Randall, you're like a son to me. You know what that means, don't you? That you're willing to support me until I find my way in the world? Oh my god! Are you gonna buy me my first car? Thanks, Daddy! Jesus H. Christ. Your parents must feel like schmucks for feeding you and cleaning your cage so long. Thank you, Mr. Marconi. You're like the father I always wanted. This year I'll make you a special card for Father's Day, with macaroni and glitter. Oh, you wear me out, Hicks. You could learn something from that roommate of yours, Mortimer. Now there's a real hard worker. What are you talking about? The guy hasn't come out of his room for months. Mortimer is the perfect tenant. He keeps it down and never gives me any trouble. All you do is make my life miserable. Mr. Marconi, we already had this conversation, and I promised you, no more megaphone after 10 o'clock. And as far as I know, Mortimer doesn't even speak our language. 
Leave him alone. You should try and be more responsible, Hicks. Eh, do something with your life for God's sake. Yeah, yeah, in a minute. By the way, you said you'd give me back my megaphone. I want my money now. Now that you mention Mortimer, he's the one that should have paid. Oh. Oh, I just had what alcoholics refer to as a moment of clarity. I gave my half to Mortimer last week. That's enough, Hicks. Your roommate is a busy man, so leave him out of your lives. Go back in there and fix this. I'm not moving from here until you pay up. You know, Mr. Marconi, there's this rumor spreading that you've got so much money that you don't know what to do with it all. What? Do I look like a rich man to you, Hicks? Well, now that you mention it, you kind of look like you should be living in a garbage can. Very funny, Hicks. You know what? One call and I can have you turned into fish food. Nah, I'm not really fond of marine fauna. But if there's one thing that's clear, it's you're a wealthy man. So you won't even notice if I don't pay you this month either. Hicks. All right, Mr. Marconi. I'll see what I can do. Comrade Mortimer, we have a code red. Old Marconi wants us to pay everything we owe him today. <laughs> Mortimer, cut it out and give me the money or you're going to wake up tomorrow with my head in your bed. And you'll be next. Because when I tell him you've been writing Mrs. Marconi love letters, you're going down too, buddy. <laughs> I didn't get a single word of that. I think we made it clear with that. One growl means no, two growls means yes. You just made me want to break down the door and stomp on your head. Wait a second. Three growls now? Dude, we said two means yes, one means no. But three? What's that all about? Mortimer, I'll never understand this language of yours. Can we please go back to Klingon? Batteries will come in handy later. Alright. Next thing we want to do is we want to go into Randall's room and convert into broom and duck hanger. have some wire left all right after we do that we want to go out to some fire escape climb down one wire and then use the extendable duct hanger
find out. Ooh, the fire escape, huh? Yeah, good idea. I like that metallic noise they make. Makes me feel safe. <laughs> What the hell was that? Was that the fire escape? Maybe we should think this through. Although, I bet it's not as frightening as old Marconi's hairy vein. Or maybe it is. Judging by that noise, I'd say there's some scary-ass creature in that alley. Oh boy. Whoa, whoa, seriously. I'm relatively too young to die. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna die here. But at least I will look death in the eye and say, I'm not afraid of you. this over a stupid filthy cat well that's embarrassing luckily no one saw me except for the cat and mrs. Grozer of course I don't want to start a fight that animal looks dangerous Here. Phew, perfect. I got rid of that stinking cat and now the coast is clear. Things are looking up. You're cursed. Huh? You're cursed. Um, what now? Cursed. Cursed? So that wasn't my imagination after all. You're cursed! Aw, oh, man. Was that you in my ear all night? I had a hell of a night because of you. Worst night since I ate that three-year-old jar of mayonnaise. Wait till I get down there! You're cursed! That does it. No one curses Randall. Bye-bye, Mrs. Grozer. Say hi to Mr. Grozer. the odds. Whew, that was close. I feel like I'm gonna puke my heart out. Whew, this must be what freedom tastes like. You're cursed! Easy, easy. I haven't forgotten about you. Let me just check and make sure everything is where it should be, then I'll decide whether to face you or get the hell out of here. Just after I throw a rock at your face or something. So, you're a bum, huh? And who are you? What? You don't even know I'm the victim of your nighttime screaming? I think you're mistaken. The cat went that way. You're the one I'm looking for, bum. Your days of cursing people are over. Wrong again! I am no bum. Of course you are. And with an obvious drinking problem, I'd say. Boy, you couldn't be more wrong. I'm a businessman, and I only drink energy drinks. Oh, well, excuse me, Gordon Gecko. I didn't know this was your office. Be careful when you get out onto the street. You don't want that nice suit getting dirty. Ah, oh, no, bro, <coughs> kid. Running a business is no walk in the park, you know. If you want to be someone in life, you gotta start at the bottom. Yeah. Well, you got the edge there, because this is rock bottom. Besides, everybody knows drunk people always tell the truth. So if you say I'm a drunk bum that says he's not a bum, but really he is, wouldn't that be paradoxical, Mr. Smiley Pants?
Well, let's see. You dress like a bum, you smell like a bum, and nothing you say makes any sense. Okay, maybe I'm a business bum. Are you interested in a retching cat? Oh boy, poor old man. The alcohol's pickled your brain. Listen. Your problem is that you haven't been with a girl in a long time, if ever. Am I right? Listen, bum, I've got two words for you. Shut the fuck up. They say a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. But what of the man who possesses too much knowledge? Well, he won't end up living in an alley, that's for sure. So where did you learn that saying anyway? On a TV show or something? No. You mean yes? No. Oh, really? Because I think I heard that one on the scary door last week. I said no. Us bums don't watch sci-fi shows. <laughs> you just gave yourself away, old man. No. I don't think so. Okay, whatever. Take care, old man, and stay out of trouble. You don't want to end up getting grounded. We'll meet again. Can't wait. You're cursed! Well, you can't deny it now. You just said it. I heard you. Said what? Why are you torturing me like this? I didn't do anything. Not yet, but you will. Oh, God. I know you're kind. I have my own problems, too, you know. My boss and my landlord are boneheads, and they're both pissed at me. And if I don't deal with them soon, I might end up living down here with you. If knowledge is power and power corrupts, how will humankind ever survive? Oh my god, those lame sayings again, really? Aren't you supposed to pay a copyright on them or something? Not me. Okay, great. So in summary, you're a bum and I'm cursed. Yes. Aha! Didn't you say you knew nothing about it? That was just an opinion. I think you're cursed and I can help. Oh shit, here it goes, but before we get deeper into this conversation, give me a second, I do have to take a moment and use the restroom, be right back. Alright everybody, we're back, and we are going to continue on with this story. You can help me? <laughs> That's a laugh. I went to school for seven years. I'm no dummy. Clearly. Welp. I thought I could be of help. Look, I can take care of myself, like Gordon Freeman. I don't know that Freeman guy. But here, take my card, boy. Give me a call when you change your mind. This? This is a rusty old razor blade. And there's no number on it. A stinking dumpster? There is no way I'm gonna touch anything in there. I don't like rummaging through the garbage, but how can I say no to a dried out tube of glue? I believe that's all we need from in here. Oh wait, we still need to look at this. All right, thanks Matt. Now I have some cash. And your wedding ring. The hell would he leave his wedding ring in there? Down to the street.
One pass, please. Aha, uh -huh. six letters down. I'm sorry, but I'm kind of in a rush here. I'm late for work, you know? Three letters across farm animal. Oh my god, excuse me. Can I get a pass, please? One moment, please. I'll be with you in a second, sir. Just please stay on the line. Did she just say stay on the line? One pass for the subway. Hello? I'll be with you in a second, sir. Please stay on the line. Your call is very important to us. Oh, great. So this is one of those days, huh? God, I'm not even supposed to be at work today. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I am, but I don't feel like it. All I want is a damn pass. First reference right there. A combination of electronic devices and biological matter. Six letters. What? I don't appreciate your ruse, ma'am. Your call is very important to us. What call? There's no call. Please stay on the line. Kill me. Oh my god, kill me now. Let's see. Eleven letters down. It starts with I. Inadequate to or unsuitable for a particular purpose. Thank you for calling and sorry for any inconvenience. Hey, hey, hold on. Don't you hang up on me. Don't you dare hang up on me. She hung up. That cow hung up on me. <laughs> cow. Five across three letters farm animal. Thank you. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Do you know if this glass is bulletproof? It isn't? I just wanted to know if it would be possible to break in with a heavy, blunt implement. Oh, no, no, please, don't be afraid of me. What kind of man do you take me for? All I'll do is rip your head off and make sure you're not a cyborg sent from the future to fuck me over. Cyborg. Six letters down. A combination of electronic devices and biological matter. Thanks. So that's how you want to play it, huh? Okay, last chance. Give me my pass now, and there'll be no consequences. Is that your final word? Fine. You're on my list now, right below Lucas and Jar Jar. And if you ever get a letter bomb, just be sure to remember the name Randall Hicks. Wait, no. Don't remember that name. Scratch that. You know what? I'm out of here. You break my heart. Carrying a trash can around is not something I want to do. Alright, now we got the tube of glue. Let's go back to what we were supposed to do over here. There. 
There you go. we have here aren't you a little old to be jumping the gate listen it's not what you think ah oh, they always say that it's not listen to me officer officer murray to protect and serve i know your kind do you think you can get yourself out of this by playing dumb well why did you try to sneak in without paying Well, I'm a poor, miserable Irish immigrant. Oh, good lord, what will become of me now? Hey, I'm Irish too. What a coincidence. Where are you from? I'm uh, from uh, Longford County, yeah. No way! I'm from there too, so I guess your math teacher was all Duncan McGlentis, right? Oh, uh, yeah, Mr. McGlintus. What a mensch. So many memories. Ha! Gotcha! Old Duncan McGlintus II was a geography teacher. You got so busted. You can't go anywhere until I finish the report. Oh, great. Don't tell me I have to wait for Murray to learn how to read. No way! I need to get out of here right now. If I don't make it to work today, my boss is gonna freak out on me. What? And get squashed? I don't think so. Hey there, Mini Murray. You're mine now. See what happens. Here we go. Get out of 
out of here. Hello again. Could I please have my goddamn pass once and for all? Well, I'm not really sure, you little smartass. I didn't think too much of your little glue prank. Listen, lady, I gotta go to work, and I don't think this is something that requires a police officer's intervention, right? Uh, fine. Here's your stupid pass. Now scram! Yes! Randall wins. Good morning, Vietnam! Well, look who's here. My star employee. My right-hand man. My lucky charm who seems to feel the need to remain incognito. Sometimes I wonder, when will he next grace us with his presence? Wow. Thank you, Mr. Emerson. I've always considered myself to be your secret weapon, like some kind of ninja, you know? Ah, cut the crap, Hicks! Even my beloved ex-wife would be better at this job than you! We both know that your ass has to be here at 9 o'clock sharp, and it's already noon. This package should have been delivered to the annual koala convention hours ago. I have been more than patient with you. Listen, if you can only spare me a tiny bit more of your patience, I just might surprise you. Oh, and by the way, please don't yell at me like that. My landlord has already yelled at me this morning, and I got a serious hangover going on here. Oh, and that reminds me. I need an advance. What? See? I did surprise you. Where do I begin? You remember when I told you to close on Friday night and I gave you the key? Of course I do. I'm a good employee. Hey, if you were, you'd be here before 9 o'clock to open up. God damn it, Hicks, that's the only key! It's my key! And I trusted you with it, even though I know you've been stealing office supplies. That's because I suffer from kleptomania. And honestly, that doesn't have anything to do with our current issue. It's a sickness, and it's rude for you to bring it up. Ah, shut up! Oh, for the love of God, just shut up and give me that key. I'm just getting started here. Well, hmm, I don't think I've seen any keys in my inventory. Oh, wait, 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 now I'm getting the picture. So this is the part where I have to find the key to get the advance and... You lost the damn key? I told you to guard it with your life! And I did. I swear on Super Hot Chick's voluptuous curves. How dare you even speak her name, you vile, shameless pig! Oh, that was way out of line, Mr. Emerson. I could be carrying a tape recorder and sue you, you know? But to be honest, I don't think I've seen a tape recorder in my inventory either. You dare to desecrate my most valued possession? Come on. All this because of a stupid key? Oh, is it made of platinum or what? Seriously, was it platinum? Because if it was, we have to find it. Forget that damn key! I'm talking about something I keep in my safe, Hicks! You mean that map to Scabs Island? I am talking about a first edition of the official Wonder Comics catalog. Published in 1972, with Super Hot Chick wearing all her classic little numbers. Now all I have left is the cover, which is covered in oil stains and smells like tuna! See? Now that kind of rings a bell. 
Come on, Mr. Emerson, what do you expect me to do? Another joke about my inventory? As I said on my resume, I'm a man with ambition and I always achieve my goals. A lovable rascal, if you will. If I need something, I take it. And honestly, I needed something to wrap my sandwich in. You can't deny that my complete honesty is another good quality to add to my resume, can you? Well, you better start updating that doodle napkin you call a resume, Hicks. You're fired! What? You mean just like that? What did I do? Get out! Whoa, whoa, come on, wait a second. At least you'll give me some compensation, right? I want my severance pay. You have cost me a lot of money, Hicks. Between the locksmith's bill, new locks, all the stuff you've stolen from the office, including a PC. Oh, but I told you, I needed to update my blog. It's not right to do that at work. I'm not done yet. Pens, calculators, the key to the office my father gave me on his deathbed. I knew it had some kind of sentimental value. See, I do pay attention. I'm still not done. I knew that too. <laughs> Toilet paper, ink cartridges, light bulbs. I mean, why would you steal damn light bulbs? Mr. Emerson, allow me to ask you a question. Have you ever felt as if some kind of disturbed maniac was controlling you? Well, I have. I, 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 so I, I, I needed light bulbs to light up a... Uh... I don't care! You are out of control! And wrecking my catalog was really crossing the line, Hicks. Okay, fine. Just try running this business without me. You're still here. I'm waiting for an apology. You know what, Hicks? I never went to Vietnam, but I took part in the Battle of Mogadishu. And believe me, I saw things there. Well, what a coincidence. That same weekend I spent the whole day killing things in a video game. See? We have something in common. I am seriously considering ripping your heart out, stuffing it into this packet, and mailing it to your mother. Oh, that's it. I quit. I can't work in these conditions. There's just too much hostility. Get the hell out of here! Get out! And don't you ever, ever come back. Okay, okay, easy, big fella. I'm gonna come out here. Get a broken radio somewhere. See inside the office from here.
Uh, hey, Mr. Emerson, I think we should have a word about the radio incident. Was it really necessary to throw it at my head? Get the hell out of here! Get out! And don't you ever, ever come back! All right, all right, easy. All right, everybody, check it out. So that was a glitch. Um, then the way I fixed it was just by going off to the map area and coming back on. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pick up this broken radio. Look at here. We're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and look at the broken radio. A couple of pieces are out of place. I don't have a job anymore. Good morning. Good for you. Aloha. What could I pawn so I can get enough money for rent? I kinda need a lot of cash. What have you got? Well... This is a genuine subway pass. It allows you to travel freely around the city. Are you serious? Of course I am. I don't need that. This is an extendable duck hanger. I made it myself. Is it wooden? I have a lot of stainless steel hangers, made by yours truly. Some pages from the 1972 Wonder Comics official catalog, including some pictures of Super Hot Chick in her classic little outfits, and with very few oil and tuna stains. I don't think those are worth anything in that condition. <laughs> this awesome police officer? <coughs> uh, it's not as if it's Captain Red or anything. This great fake leather wallet that doesn't smell like wet dog? Yeah, I can smell it from here. Not interested. That ring, though. Hey, hold it. I don't remember giving you permission to sniff around my inventory. Easy, kid. It kind of comes with the territory. Well, that ring isn't exactly mine. I just wouldn't feel comfortable selling it because, you know, it... Let me get this straight. That's the only thing you have that's actually worth something, and you don't want to sell it? Well, I mean, it's just that it, it, it's, you know, I think I'd better keep it. I know it's none of my business, but don't you think that guy might be a criminal? I hope so. Don't you think he might be the kind of guy that, you know, could steal something? I guess. But he's my best supplier. No, I just found this in my grandma's old basement. 
It's of great sentimental value. Wow, that basement's a gold mine. I already have one of them, but I'll give you a nice wad for it. See? I love that guy. Okay, so I don't think I have any more business here then. Thanks anyway. Oh, wait, kid, don't just walk out like that. Why don't you have a good look around your place? Maybe you have some useless junk I might be interested in. It does seem like you really need the money. Finally, it seems like I'm getting better at making faces. I think I know where I can find some junk you might like. I'll check it out. Now yeah, we need to go back to Randall's apartment. Probably do so just by going this direction here. Damn it! Old Marconi's still here. I'll have to find a way to sneak past him. You know, I usually try to avoid total strangers. You know, I... So that's not the one we need to talk to. Sure, sure. I understand. I excuse me, sir. What exactly do you mean when you tell me to jump up my own ass? Mm, he hung up. What's up, buddy? I'm Randall. Um, hello, Randall. What's with the long face? Are you laughing at me? <laughs> of course. Have you seen you? Well, I'm a Wondermatic product salesman. And I'm having, like, the worst day. That's why I'm so bummed. Are you happy now? Now and always. So, no sales at all? Just my watch to pay my electric bill. You know, that watch belonged to my grandfather who was shot down over Hanoi. And then Captain Coons had to shove it up his ass. Yeah, 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 tragic. <laughs> Let's talk about puppies. I love puppies. A little while. Uh, yeah. Pulp Fiction. My little there. Susie has been begging me for a puppy for months now. And I don't really know what to tell her. I can't even pay the mortgage anymore. Okay, suddenly talking about puppies is getting me down. And I refuse to talk about ponies. So, what is your problem exactly? Problem is that I'm the worst salesman Wondermatic Industries has ever had. It's been two months already since I made my last sale. I can't even sell the cheapest, most basic products. I'm such a loser. Oh, come on, man. Don't be like that. You know what you should do? You should shit or get <coughs> off the pot. But what you shouldn't do is just sit around there all day complaining about how miserable you are. It's not that simple, you know? If only I could find some rich loser and sell him the complete deluxe set, my problems would be over. At least for a while. If you're looking for some chump with money, my landlord's a real bonehead, and word is he's sitting on piles of cash. Are you serious? Yeah, although they say that Morlocks are plotting a large-scale offensive. So don't take that as gospel. But is your landlord the gullible type? Well, I owe him three months rent and he still hasn't kicked me out. But I believe there are some father-son issues there, so I really don't know what to say. Sounds like a shot. My last chance, maybe. Could you give me his number? I don't mind giving it to you, but I warn you, the guy's a cranky old bastard. You can tell that even his hairy shoulders are angry when you talk to him. I don't care. I just gotta try. Well, it's your funeral. It's 555-1013. Five, 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 one, one, 
Oh, and uh, don't call him when there's a full moon. They say that he gets a little out of hand. I'm calling him right now. Hello? Good morning, sir. Do you have a minute? I would like to talk to you about the advantages of our wonderful... Get a real job, scumbag. I failed again. I don't know what I was thinking. I told you, he's a rude, belligerent old man. You also said that he was easy to manipulate, but I can't even keep him on the line for more than two seconds. I can't make a sale like that. I know how you feel, man. He only wants to talk to me if it's to threaten me or call me names. Just like my boss, and my wife, even my kids. Oh, come on, don't give up, man. Go on, try again. What for? He made it very clear he's not interested. So, that's how they do it at Wondermatic, huh? Just because he called you a scumbag, you think he's not interested? You can't just give up on the first hurdle. All right. I'll try. Hello? Good morning, sir. I think there was a problem with the line before. See? He's right, I'm just a scumbag. Here, let me try. Are you serious? I'm always serious. Except when I find guys I can take advantage of. Then I just can't help lying. I don't really know how to take that. Oh, come on, give me the phone. You got nothing to lose. Well, that's true enough. Here, do whatever you want. Time. Hello? Hello, Mr. Marconi? Would you be interested in buying a bunch of crap manufactured using some really obsolete technology? I don't know how the hell you know my name, but unless you want to end up in a whole world of pain, I suggest you stop bothering me, you filthy maggot! Wow, he sounded really aggressive. Well, that's what I expected. I'm sure I can do much better. Can I try again? Sure. I got nothing to lose. Showtime. Are you still there in the hall waiting for me? Hicks, is that you? Yep, Hicks speaking. I sneaked out of the apartment and I still ain't got your money. How do you like that? Is that so? Well, I know somebody who's sleeping in the street tonight. Comprende? Oh, come on, Mr. Marconi. I was hoping you'd forgiven me by now. I mean, I'm appealing to your sense of common decency. But then, maybe now I'm figuring that you don't really have any based on how you dress. You goddamn bastard. Do you think this is funny, Hicks? Well, good luck finding a roof over your head tonight. I could say the same about your pot belly. In fact, I just did. Do you really think that attitude is going to get you anywhere in life? Huh? You disgust me, Hicks. You disgust me. You're nothing but a repulsive worm who crawls along the bottom looking for people to annoy. You never worry about the things that really matter. I'm done with all your crap. You're really pushing my buttons here. You hear me? I'm gonna kick your butt so hard that I'm... Okay, look, he just started talking about kicking my ass. He'll be on that for a while now, so here. I, uh... Just talk to him a little. It's not that hard. Uh-huh. I understand. Uh-huh. I understand. Sure. Now we're going into Randall's apartment. The world would be a much better place if scum like you would just disappear. You must. We're going to go to Randall's room. We're going to find a box of junk. Very good box.
Then we're going to go ahead and take it. Never thought I'd find and we're going to take crap. a super quick break because I have to use the restroom once the again. Wonderful. Of course. Thank you for your kindness, sir. It was a real pleasure doing business with you. And don't worry, you won't regret going for the three-pack deal. No, no. Thank you. Have a nice day, sir. Bye-bye. I love it when a plan comes together. Did you see that? I sold him the basic set, the deluxe set, and even the classic set. I can't believe he fell for it. The last one is completely useless. Let's celebrate. Maybe some other day, buddy. I got things to do. I mean, more important things. At least let me give you something. I couldn't have done this without you. I've always got time for free stuff. Although, is it poison? Because it wouldn't be the first time someone's offered me poison. And if it is, I uh, don't want it. No, it's not poison. Who do you think I am? Here. I hope this comes in handy. Well, thanks, man. I'll see you around. I don't want to go down the subway. Then we're going to go back to uh, Mel's Pawn Shop. There you go. Here are some rare, authentic pieces from the exclusive world of urban subculture. Legend says they're bathed in a mysterious aura. Let's take a look at this pile of garbage. This is the trophy I won after beating a guy, whose name was 8-Ball by the way, in a pool game in Wisconsin. Oh, that was a tough one, let me tell you. It was without a doubt the most extreme experience I've ever had. Like a chess game that lasts for days. And believe me when I say that when we were done, we both got banned from Massachusetts for life. You said the game was in Wisconsin. It started in Wisconsin, but we ended up in Massachusetts. Just imagine the competitive skills that would require. There were betrayals, firearms, a high-speed ride on a train without brakes, and in the dying seconds of the game, we had to defuse a bomb on the pool table. It was definitely something to remember, all right? Okay, man. But if you don't have any paperwork to back up your little story, then that's just a common eight ball. This console is as good as new. Advanced North Korean technology. Very educational, but if you make a mistake, it shocks you. Careful, though. All the questions are in Korean. First time I played, I was like the Indian in Cuckoo's Nest for three days. But believe me, those shocks really liven you up in the morning. Better than coffee, I'd say. If I need something to help me liven up in the morning, I drink Mercury Cola. Ever heard of Skelextric? Unless that piece of track belonged to Lewis and Clark, don't even bother. It sure did. Exploring is a taxing job. They used to play with it to break up the monotony. Me? Wrong. Skelextric wasn't even discovered until 1846 in those ancient Aztec ruins. Keep trying, kid. Can I offer you a once-in-a-lifetime deal on this one-of-a-kind lava lamp? The lava is from Krakatoa and Vesuvius. Shaken, not stirred. Sorry, I already have like nine of those. Is that it? Don't you have an ace up your sleeve? Uh, did I mention with this pass you can ride around the whole city for free? Ah, <sighs> I'm sorry, but the only thing you have that's worth anything is that ring. Oh, couldn't you give me something for the lava lamp? 
I guess I could give you something. And what about for the Korean consul? Maybe a little? Maybe. Then problem solved. Some money plus a little money equals a respectable sum of money, right? That is true, kid. But consider this for a second. You said you needed a lot of money, and I can give you more than a lot of money for that ring. Are you telling me I've just been wasting my time with all this crap? See? You just said it's all crap. Now the ball is pretty much in your court. You decide. Damn it, Hicks! I want my goddamn money, and I want it now! Ah, uh, that's too much. I, I, I can't sell the ring. What about Matt? He'd be devastated. He'll never know, idiot. He doesn't even know you stole it in the first place. No, it doesn't feel right. Listen to me, pal. You better sell that freaking ring and pay me already, or I swear to Lucifer, I'll turn your life into a daily hell. <laughs> Shut that trap, you sissy! The grown-ups are talking, and if you dare to come between me and my money, I will piss your ass like a goddamn meatball! Oh, heavens! That bastard has a pitchfork, and all they gave me was this harp. I demand a flaming sword! Come on, come on, there's no need to fight about it. I will impale you and slowly roast you on a simmering heat, you filthy maggot! Fucking hell! This motherfucker is serious! Randall, sell the fucking ring already! It's no big deal, it only cost me a Dorito! <clears throat> Give that damn bastard his fucking money and let's put a stop to this shit already! Then I'll do it. Are you one of those guys that whenever they have to make an important decision, they see little angels and demons? Bingo! And I'm gonna do what the angel said. I'm selling the ring. That same thing happens to me since I started drinking Mercury Cola. But I don't see angels, just demons. Creatures from hell that tell me to hurt people and to burn things. But don't worry, man. I'll learn to ignore them. Let's get back to business, shall we? I'm sure glad you wisened up, kid. You have the ring? Here. And you can keep the box, too. Well, thank you. You know, it's weird. I don't know what's so special about this ring. I have no idea of its real value. But I'd be willing to pay an obscene amount of cash for it. Well then, go ahead. What's stopping you? Here you go. Wow! Any time, man! If I ever find another one, I'll know where to come. There is no other, kid. There is no other. Well, uh, I'm not sure if you're in the middle of some kind of mercury cola induced hallucination right now. So I'm just gonna take off with my wad of cash and, uh, you know, I guess I'll see you around. Okay. Alright, we exit out to the street. I was having a normal day going on lousy, and out of the blue, Lady Luck just pops out of nowhere and French kisses me and feels me up. Who shall I go slap with this wad of bills first? Marconi? Emerson? My kindergarten teacher told me I'll never amount to anything. This is Donald Trump speaking. I'm off to a private party in Mr. Hefner's place, so please, make it quick. Randall? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Sally, what's wrong? Randall? It's Matt! Matt! Oh my god! Sally, come on, you're scaring me. What's going on? But, 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 but what happened? I, um, did uh, someone steal his wallet or, you know, something? Randall, I don't want to tell you this on the phone. But what's wrong with Matt? I, uh, what did he do? Matt is... Oh, my God. I need you here right away. What? Sally, d d don't hang up on me like that. God damn it. I have to go to Matt's place and find out what's going on. Even if it ends up being really disappointing, like 3D movies. Alright, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go in this direction here, go and try to go to Matt's. Wow, 
What a party! What the hell happened here? Can't get to Matt's place, the whole area is cordoned off. Alright, so we were talking to the hot dog vendor first. Good morning. How's business, sir? Well, I'm hanging in there. Looks like it's picking up a bit. Oh, good for you. Do you have any idea what happened here? No, but who cares? It's always the same story. Nobody's shooting it. It's pink syrup time bombs. Dude, what the hell are you talking about? For a giant marshmallow bag. <coughs> Those are my favorite sagas, the one you just mentioned. You're all right. You're cool. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on. Don't make me put a piece of orange peel between my teeth and hunt you down until you confess all your sins. <laughs> okay, I did it. I'm crazy about the movies that are at least 15 years old. Are there any other kind? I know, right? Okay. Given that you haven't asked me yet, I'll just go for it. Can I have a hot dog with extra everything, please? Thank you. I'd love to, but I'm afraid that's impossible. I ran out of gas, and I need a new cylinder to cook on. Well, don't you have a replacement? Don't you think if I had one, I would be using it already? I don't know. I really don't understand the limits of human stupidity. Neither do I. Why don't you just get another one? I wish I could, but I can't take my eyes off that Vina gobbling cop. He's single-handedly putting my kid through college. I see, but uh, you know what? How are you gonna sell him something if you don't have anything to sell? Ah, uh, you don't get it, boy. That cop there is coveted by every bastard in the hot dog vendor guild. If I lower my god for even a second, Abe Froman, the sausage king from Chicago, is liable to swoop in and steal him away. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't just standing there with no goods to sell really bad for business? Uh, yeah, when you put it like that, it does sell pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, I think you need to get a new cylinder ASAP. Believe me, I can hear Murray's guts rumbling from here. Hey, wait a second. Did Froman send you? He's trying to edge me out of my monopoly on that Pac-Man-like hot dog gobbler, isn't he? Well, over my dead body. No, no way. Who do you think I am? I'm an honest guy. Come on, give me a break. Hey, I tell you what I'm gonna give you, snakes. I'm gonna give you to the count of ten to get your ugly, yellow, no-good keister off my property before I pump your guts full of lead. Wait. One, two, ten. What a classic. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Well, given your movie preferences, I think I'll just say, we came, we saw, we kicked its ass. Well said, my friend. <coughs> now I know I can trust you. I would have also accepted he slimed me. Okay, so now we're friends. Can I have a hot dog, please? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I still have that little gas problem. But now that we are friends, I can trust you with the mission of getting me a new gas cylinder. It's a dangerous quest, steeped in mystery. Oh, so now that we're friends, I can do your dirty work for you. I get it. Exactly. Just tell me where to go. Let's get this done already. God. Have you heard of Mel's Pawn Shop? Sure, good old Mel. Now I see what you meant by a dangerous quest. But hey, why the hell do you buy your gas in a pawn shop anyway? Well, Mel has good prices, and he offers a quick, efficient, and personal service. Oh, I got you now. Stolen gas, eh? Yeah, probably. Okay, no problem. I just made a deal with him a little while ago. Just give me a minute. I gotta go back to those.
Um, excuse me, Mel. Can I talk to you for a second? I'm with a customer right now. I'll be with you in a minute. That's okay. I just wanted to, uh... He just told you to wait a minute. I'll make him tell you again, or I'll tell you again. Whoa, that, that won't be necessary. Then can you give me that deal with the riffs? Sure, right on time and at a very good price. In fact, I think I should get going if I want to make it. What time is it? I don't know. But relax, man. You still have plenty of time. What about the competition? Is everything under control? The Turnbulls, the Orphans, and the Furies huh. are locked it's down. perfectly. And I don't think the Lazies are gonna be a problem. But I need to sure. fit it in the right, right place. Time. And at a very good price. In fact, I think I should get going if I want to make it. What time is it? I don't know. But relax, man. You still have plenty of time. What about the competition? Is everything Looks under control? Like the Turnbulls, the Orphans, and the Furies are locked down. And I don't think the Lazies are going to be a problem. Let's wind up this. Shut, 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 shut. Okay, it's time. The shipment is about to arrive. Better leave now. See you, Mel. Hello again, Mel. Hey, uh, Randall. Randall, I knew that. So how can I help you? You have any more rings you want to sell me? Uh, actually, I'm here on behalf of someone else this time. Okay, shoot. I, I don't even know the guy's name, actually. It's this hot dog vendor I just met, but, well, you know me. I'm always a good Samaritan, trying to help where I can. Actually, I don't know you at all. But whatever. Go on. Uh, anyway, so this guy came here this morning to buy a new gas cylinder. But it turns out the one you sold him is completely empty. Really? Do you have the receipt? <laughs> of course I do. I mean, what, what kind of man do you think I am? Uh, one who demands stuff when he doesn't even have a receipt? It wouldn't surprise me. Here, take it. Okay. Jeez, I don't know how that cylinder got empty. I'll fill it up tonight before I close. You can take that one next to the clock. That's a new one. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Take a new one. I'll just leave the empty one there. I forgot, I do believe we go back. Let me see. Thanks, boy. Man, your hot dogs better be exquisite, because I had to jump through hoops to get that cylinder. And I missed a very important phone call. Shut up. Jeez, I'm See how that dummy box knows me and starts glaring at the smell of my hot wheels. It's like something innate. Pure instinct. Yeah, looks like he's coming over. Looks like a charm. Well, here. Take this as a thank you. A dog with extra everything. Now that I have to get to work, my instincts tell me that the specimen is gonna make a run on my cart any time now. I'd better get ready. Okay, sure. See you then.
Сейчас мы валили с... I know Murray is all about hot dogs, but I don't want to do that. I don't know him anything. Excuse me, ma'am. You know what the hell happened here? Hold on a second, Mary Ann. I don't want to leave. Like, go away. What? No. Wait. What? What do you want? Do you by any chance know what happened here? Wait a second. You're Matthew's friend, the kleptomaniast. Kleptomaniast? Really? Whatever. Yeah, that's me. Well, I'm his neighbor. And I have to say that I really didn't appreciate what you did up there on the rooftop during that Christmas party you had. Listen, I've already apologized to the mayor, the police chief, the ASPCA, and took out an ad in the paper apologizing to the public in general, all right? My son saw everything, and believe me, it has done him some serious psychological damage. Hee-haw! 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 Yikes. I don't know what Matthew did this time, but it must be really serious, because they're not letting anyone into the building. Now get lost! Oh, what a cute little boy. You're ugly. Well, that's kind of subjective, don't you think? I mean, I I've always believed that everyone's inner beauty is just, you know... You smell like pee. And but again, kid, that's just your opinion. I respect it, but the point is, you should just shut up, baby. You're ugly and stupid, baby. Don't talk to strangers. Who knows what kind of filthy stuff he might come out with? You heard your mother, you little punk. Just ignore me. You stink. Uh, excuse me. I'd like to get into the building, if I may. Do I look like a CSI agent to you? Go talk to that cop over there.
Maybe a punch in the face would encourage him, but nah, I don't know. I know Murray is all about hot dogs, but I don't want to do that. I don't owe him anything. I think I should talk to Matt for... Ah, oh, finally let me talk to him. My God, Murray! I'm so glad you're in charge. You see, I need to get in there, so uh, if you'll excuse me... Sorry, boy. I'm not that stupid. You sure? I'm afraid this is not your lucky day. We just can't let any random guy off the street in here. Damn it! I'm not just anyone, I'm your friend Randall. What the hell happened to you? You used to be so cool. Well, I... Murray, come on. We can't just ignore what happened in that dank underground room. There was something there, something more than just words. You even pushed your nightstick up against me. But now we need to act like that never happened, okay? We have to move on. That dank underground room was my beloved office, you sicko. And I'm starting to think you're to blame for its total destruction. <laughs> that offends me, Murray. I thought there was this connection between you and me, but now I see you were just leading me on the whole time. I only have a connection with my barbecue, a cold soda, and a handful of German wieners. <laughs> that thing about the wieners? What? No! I meant... Yeah, okay. German wieners. I get it, Murray. I, don't, look, I'm not judging. Get lost! But what about your words, Murray? A few hours ago you wanted to know everything about me, and now suddenly you're not interested anymore? What's wrong with you? I was just filling in your police report. I needed to know all your details. Jesus Christ, that's the lamest excuse ever. Fifteen-year-old girl could flirt better than you. <laughs> you know what? I'll try reverse psychology. I don't want to get in there, Murray. Don't you dare try letting me in there. I don't want to go. You almost got me, boy. Pity you said you were going to try reverse psychology. Ah, crap. I was actually talking to my homie behind the fourth wall. Just ignore that wall and get out of my sight. Come on, Officer Murray. I have a close friend in there and he's in trouble. And you know what? You're not the heartless, unscrupulous type of cop. Why don't you just keep this little wad of money and just step aside? You're only capable of showing me respect when you're trying to bribe me. <coughs> I knew you knew my whole name. I saw a little spark in the eyes the first time I said it. First time you said your name was Lee Harvey Oswald. Okay, but you made the same face. I can't waste any more time with you, boy. Are you breaking up with me? We've got a serious situation inside, boy. It's no laughing matter. So do the law a favor and go home. Okay. I'm about to get half serious here and ask you what's going on. I can't give you details, but as far as I know, the incident occurred at Matthew Griffin's apartment. That's him! Th 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 that's my friend Matt! W what the hell happened? I, I don't quite know, but I can only allow people that are really close to him in. Like a relative. Well, well I I'm his best friend. I mean, his, his girlfriend just called me and told me to come. I don't know, boy. You hurt my feelings before, you know. And taking into account all the relevant facts, I really can't trust you. So, no. You can't go in. I don't believe you. Get the hell out of here. Murray. Like that great wise Austrian man said, I'll be back. <laughs> Thinking about that Austrian muscle man turned you on a bit, didn't it, Murray? Come on, look at you. Get the hell out of here. Beat it, scram. That's an order. I don't ever want to see your face again. Okay, fine. God damn it. If only there was a phone in my inventory I could call Sally. But no, it's just a narrative resource, so it only rings when the wheel of fate decides so. This sucks. 
can only receive phone calls in this stupid game. Well, get used to it, Randall. Although it doesn't really matter. I don't even have any credit anyway. I haven't topped up in years. I guess I just like to blame all my problems on video games. I need to find a way to sneak in. And, uh, why am I talking to that fourth wall punk again? Get out! Yeah. Go away! You're ruining my life! Although, since they've been here, I've come into an absurd amount of money. What the hell? My life now has all this adventure in it, but that's probably because I lost my job. Money helps dealing with the pain, though. Hey, wait! Okay, I'll give you another chance, but just don't blow it this time. Um, am I crazy, or is this Matthew Griffin's wallet? Let me see. Where did you find this? With all due respect, Murray, I think I should talk about this with someone a little higher up the chain of command. I'm so glad you think that way, boy. Come in. Sergeant Kramer likes the smart-ass type. You're his problem now. So, that's it? I can go in? Yeah, I guess they'll be questioning you. But don't touch or take anything. <laughs> do you know who you're talking to? I sure do. That's why I said it. Now get out of my sight. Hey, did somebody call for Ghostbusters? Oh, God. Randall, you're here. What the hell happened here? Where's Matt? He's with the cops in the kitchen. And what are the cops doing here? What do you think? He really messed up this time. What a jerk. I'm not talking to him ever again. Wait one second, guys. Alright, guys, we're back. We're gonna wrap this up. This is coming up to the end of day number one now. You mean this is even worse than that legendary machete fight he set up between the chimps and the orangutans in 2003? Definitely. Really? Don't forget one of the chimps bit the Coast Guards and gave them all rubella. I mean, at least it looked like rubella. Randall, this time, Matt has made me seriously reconsider our relationship. You mean this is even bigger than <coughs> the biggest puke omelet in the world? Well, he swears <coughs> one would feature this epitaph, but this time there are no words to... There are no words. You mean he actually went through with his plan? He really froze a living being in his Frigomatic 9000? Not yet, but I keep having these nightmares. Cryogenically frozen with a note that says, I want to see a future ruled by machines. Yeah, that sounds like something he would do, and I'm sick of this. I don't want to have to deal with stuff like this for the rest of my life. Well, not quite. Just until he freezes himself. He's really obsessed with that future ruled by machines thing, and any kind would do. The one where machines use people as batteries, the one where machines use people to create soil and green, the one where machines use people as test subjects, you know, with portals, cubes, and buttons. I can't take it anymore. I'm a good person. I don't deserve this. Why don't you go to the kitchen and check out his masterpiece? I have a lot of thinking to do. Are you okay? Do you want an extendable duck hanger? It might cheer you up. Just go to the kitchen. I think Matt needs a friend now, more than ever. Just what the fuck is going on here? And who the hell are you? My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Are you threatening me, boy? Or are you a dumbass who thinks he's a smartass? Do you think you're funny? 
Let's see, no to the first part, I could be to the second part, and I believe I'm amusing, yeah, sure. I guess you're here because Officer Murray thought you might be of help. Listen, just because you danced your way around the incompetent barbecue lover doesn't mean you can do the same with me. You're gonna answer my questions or I'm gonna break your nose with my fist and tell everyone you tried to attack me. <laughs> That's right, I'm one of those cops. Come on, Sergeant Kramer. Give the boy a break. Mind your own business, Ned. We're just taking photos and looking for fingerprints. I'll handle this, punk. And then he wonders why we never call him when we go out for a drink. Fuck you, like I'd go to one of your stupid girly parties where you light scented candles from the body shop and wax each other's private parts all the while giggling and sharing your deepest secrets. Oh, so you're the one trying to be funny now. But I believe that thing in the oven is my friend's body, and to be honest, the only thing I can think of right now is that you know way too much about stuff that goes on in slumber parties. Look, maggot, you better tell me who you are and what you're doing here, or else you'll be spending the night in the cells where you'll come to be known as Susan. It's your choice. <clears throat> Look, I'm Randall Hicks, and this is my best friend's apartment. I'm here because his girlfriend called me. My favorite color is orange, I like spring rolls on rainy days, I hate peas in movies that copy other movies, and if I find a tortoise lying upside down in the desert, I guess I'd eat it because I'd be hungry after wandering through the dunes. Happy now? You can check it on your Voight Kampf, my friend. It's all true. You say you're Matt Griffin's best friend, Mr. Hicks? Is that your final answer? I'm only asking because Mr. Griffin mentioned you in his suicide note. Then it's official? That corpse is Matt's? His girlfriend identified the body. Sally? But, but, but she's the one that just called me. I, I, I talked to her and she never mentioned he was dead. The girl is pretty shaken up. Somehow she's refusing to accept that her boyfriend's dead. That's called the denial stage. I know it is, Ned. But it's the first time I've seen a girl yelling at her boyfriend's corpse and then telling him he'd better clean up the mess. If you're done with your little chit-chat, I'll carry on questioning the suspect. Whoa, 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 suspect? But you said there was a suicide note. Yeah, there is. But honestly, you don't come off very well in the note, Mr. Hicks. So, uh, well, what does it say exactly? You'd really love to know what your buddy wrote in his note about you, wouldn't you? So you'll know if you're implicated or not, huh? Look, friend, I, I didn't do anything wrong. I I've been at work all day. And what exactly do you do for a living, friend? I I'm a delivery guy at Emerson Express, uh, although... A little hesitant there, Sonny. Will Emerson confirm your alibi? The truth is he fired me this morning. He kicked me out, you know, but, but it, that was over an unrelated oily issue. I mean, nothing to do with this at all. Oh, what a shame. Now you won't be able to keep saving for those beautiful leather boots with fringes and golden rivets you love so much. Hey, how did you know about that? Come on, sweet cheeks, tell me more. What did you do after you got fired? I, uh, I, I went looking for a new job. Oh, yeah? Where? Well, uh... I tried to join the Marines, but they rejected me because I have a lazy eye. Boy, you wouldn't last more than 20 minutes in the Marines. Well, FYI, I've completed the whole Marine Squad revenge saga, and I've watched Full Metal Jacket 78 times. I am more than ready. You don't know diddly squat. You don't know what it is to take off a uniform dripping with blood. You don't know how it feels to stab your enemy in the chest with your bayonet. You don't know the smell of napalm and burning flesh. You're just a stupid kid with delusions of grandeur. You were in the Marines, Sergeant? Hey, I thought you knew how an interrogation works. Allow me to explain. You question the suspect, not the officer in charge, capiche? The day I find myself talking to you about my military experience will be the day Armageddon's upon us. You know, I saw in a magazine today that the apocalypse will happen in about two years' time. God damn it, stop chattering away like an eighth grader. I don't give a damn about your opinions unless they have something to do with blood or fingerprints. And I don't give a damn about what you've read in Cosmo either. I hope you don't make me repeat that, capiche? Understood, Sergeant. We already gave you our report. 
The blood is from the victim, and the only fingerprints here belong to Mr. Griffin and his girlfriend. Our work here is done. This is clearly a suicide, but if you want to keep tormenting the boy, Ted and I will just stay here minding our own business. Fine, but don't talk to me until tomorrow when you're back on duty. Capiche? That last capiche was pushing it. Yeah, definitely one too many. Anyway, let's continue our little chat, Susan. I always wanted to be a lifeguard, like in Baywatch, but the coast is just too far from here. Uh, just the effort of picturing you saving other people's lives caused my brain to melt and ooze out of my ears and nose. Saving lives? What the hell are you talking about? I said like in Baywatch. You know, running around all shirtless and in slow motion in the company of some gorgeous ladies. But man, I can't stand the thought of seaweed between my toes. Blah. What is your major malfunction, numbnuts? I went around trying in all the sex shops I frequent, but no luck so far. Interesting. So, you're a suspect and a pervert. A pervert? Listen, officer, I don't know what you think they sell in sex shops, but I'll give you a tip. If you want to spice up your marriage, buy your wife a Scepter-Matic 9000. If you're single, get yourself a love doll. You look like you may need some of that stuff anyway. Ooh, look, a little kitty is showing her claws. Don't play with fire, numbnuts. You might end up getting burnt. Uh, y yes, sir. I I I'm sorry. That's more like it, kitty cat. Who do you think I am, your boyfriend? Uh, uh, what? Don't you ever whisper in my ear like that again. Uh, yes, sir. Don't let him push you around like that. People should show you some respect after what you did for that poor duck in the park. Ladies, please. Some of us police officers are still on duty and trying to get some work done around here. Do you mind telling me why the hell you had the dead guy's wallet? Um, we're wallet buddies, you know. He has mine, I have his. Then why doesn't he have yours? He doesn't? Then he's been playing me for years. Uh, that is without a doubt the dumbest thing you've said all day. Well, uh, you should have been with me earlier. Uh, he told me to keep it so he wouldn't spend too much money. Then why did Officer Murray just tell me there's no money in it? Because, uh, I keep it in my apartment, you know, it's safer there. I'm, I'm like his personal bank. Oh, you must be very good friends then. I wouldn't trust my money to you, not even a dime. But I guess idiots do have some kind of understanding amongst themselves. Hey, you're kind of crossing the line there. If you get off on calling me Susan, that's one thing. I could even tolerate you speaking to me like I'm a retard. But my friend is still in the oven, so you should probably show some respect. At least wait till his body stops smoking. God. Ooh, I'm so sorry if I dishonored your girl's <coughs> memory, sweet Susan. Coincidentally, I found this on the street on my way here. Oh, I'm sorry. By that calm look on your face, I guess you're expecting me to buy that. Good God, boy, you think you're dealing with Murray here? You obviously don't get it. The fact that you normally talk to idiots doesn't mean that I'm one of them. So now, if you don't mind, please tell me, what the fuck are you doing with that dead guy's wallet? Oh, God, I told you, I found it on the street on my way here. And as long as you can't prove me wrong, I'm afraid you'll have to believe it. <sighs> Congratulations, kid. You've actually succeeded in making me sick of this side of you, for now. So, do you mind if I take a look at that suicide note now? I don't mind smelling your fear, if that's what you're asking. Um... Relax, boy. Your name is in that note, so you have the right to read it. You could say it was this poor bastard's last will and testament, but I'll tell you something. When I read it, I couldn't help but think that Mr. Griffin's best friend stole his girlfriend from him. And that doesn't put you in a very good light, Mr. Hicks. I, uh, well, I, I mean, I guess we're really not that close, you know? I mean, his real best friend is a boy from Nepal. I mean, they used to chat online. You should probably start talking to him first in Nepal, ASAP. Don't think I'm done with you yet, Susan. 
The note's there on the fridge. You want to read it? Go ahead. But I'm watching you. To whoever reads this, I've stared death in the face many times. I'm fully aware that I have done some questionable things in my life. I know that, but still, I will never be able to fully understand why I'm doing this. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. People blinded by laser beams at a Spinal Tap concert, attack ships on fire off the coast of Orion, and I know I'm probably going to hell for this, but... I can't do anything but accept my fate. I'm taking my life with the Stovomatic 9000 my dear mother gave me because honestly, I don't think freezing myself cryogenically to face a future run by machines is possible yet. My reasons can't be put into mere words. I feel so empty. The very air that I breathe has been taken away from me, the most beautiful thing I've ever had. And I believe that the person responsible for this treacherous act is my best friend. And under these circumstances, I just cannot go on living in this world anymore. You see us as you want to see us. A brain, an athlete, a basket case, a princess, and a criminal. Does that answer your question? Sincerely yours, The Breakfast Club. Well, what do you make of the note? Could it be any clearer that it's your fault he killed himself? Sergeant Kramer, I'm pretty stressed out right now. Where was I when Matt saw attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion? We did everything together. I'm sorry, but I just don't feel like playing good cop, bad cop with you anymore. Hold it right there. I know you're ilk. Face <laughs> it. You're a neo-maxi zoom dweeby who thinks he can take what he wants when he wants it. You got no respect for the law, your friends, or the person playing this game. Plus, I don't like your face. There, I said it. I'm not finished with you yet, Hicks. This time, John Wayne does not walk off into the sunset, ha ha, with Grace Kelly. That was Gary Cooper, you jerk. Don't push your luck, Susan. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? No, but one time in band camp, I stuck a flute in my... Okay, enough! Do you have a car? Why? So you can give me a ticket now and tow it away? I just don't like to see young ladies walking home after dark. Officer Murray will drive you home in a police car. Murray, get your flabby ass in here! Sergeant, I told you... My buttocks look that way because of a genetic glandular problem, so it's really embarrassing when you... Shut your pie hole, Marie, and take this punk home. Uh, yes, sir. And take the dead guy's girlfriend, too. Miss... Miss Thompson already left. And why the hell didn't you tell me before? I tried, but you started yelling before I could say anything. Do you know what this is, Marie? This is a communication problem. And I think the only way to fix it is not having to hear your stupid voice ever again. So from now on, whenever you have to tell me something, you will just write it down and hand it to me. Understood? Now get out of here. Take the boy with you. Yes, sir. What did I just say? Okay, this is you, kid. But Murray, I told you to take me to a strip club. Sergeant Kramer told me to take you home. And according to our files, this is your current address. And you always just blindly obey what the guys tell you? You're too good, Murray. You've got to learn to get wild once in a while. It's my duty, son. Now get going. You'll always be the life and soul, Murray. You know that? go back in the room. Let's 
should go in the rambles. Rambles will end day one, and then that will bring us right into day two. So what I'm going to have everybody do before we walk through this door is make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, smash the notification bell so you don't miss out on more kick-ass content. Being gamers purgatory, and check out the links in the description below for our Discord, Twitch, and our Facebook page. And I'll be right back with the next day of this game.